Morning Tears works for children whose parents are sentenced to death or who are serving a long prison sentence. Children whose parents are executed suffer tremendous emotional pain. Besides their trauma, they have to cope with stigmas and prejudices from society because children of convicts are themselves considered to be criminals. These children bring bad luck. No one wants to take care of them and they end up on the street. The children that Morning Tears intends to help need a safe and caring environment where they can heal from their traumas and grow up in dignity. Project Coming Home, after the death sentence of a parent, tries to answer those needs. The Coming Home Project is situated in Zhengzhou, the capital of Henan province. Zhengzhou is an industrial city amid the farmland of central China. It has six million inhabitants. At the very beginning, uh, we uh, cooperate with Ministry of Civil Affairs and uh, they recommend Zhengzhou uh, Protection Center because uh, Zhengzhou Protection Center already uh, do a lot of things in uh, helping street kids. They got plenty of uh, experience working with international organizations. So we try to find the best partner to cooperate. We try to uh, make it the best. The objective of the Coming Home Project is to provide home-based care for Morning Tears children in China. These children will be provided with homes where they can heal from their traumas, strengthen their resilience, and fully develop their potential. Once the parents got caught, uh, usually nobody wants them. Uh, even the uh, families, the relatives, and the neighbors, nobody really wants them. And uh, most, of them come, most of them come very poor family. Usually the kids uh, came here uh, for at least one year, at least. Uh, we got plenty of kids, they have to stay here for 10, 10 years or more. Morning Tears started to work in China in 1999. The main activity is running centers where children of convicts can grow up in a safe and caring environment. So far, 384 children have spent their childhood under our wing. In our centers, we offer the children housing, food, medical services, education, psychological support, leisure activities, and above all, a warm family atmosphere. Children are brought together in groups of four or eight. We call these family units. For every family unit, there'll be one or two caregivers. A day in a family unit of the Coming Home Project is almost like a normal day at home. Usually I get up at six in the morning and cook for the children. Children have breakfast and I send them to school around seven. I go to pick them up around 11.30 and I prepare lunch, send them to school again and get them back around 5.30. I cook and we have dinner around six. The children do their homework and then we play for a while. Around 9, I ask them to take a shower or wash their faces and feet, and then we go to sleep. The caregivers are carefully selected based on their ability to learn and their personal integrity. Caregivers are trained to interact with the children in a way that supports the healing process. The caregivers receive training before they enter the Coming Home Project and also during their work. The training is about assisting uh, children with trauma. And uh, the first step, you should know what is trauma. If the kids has trauma, what they will do or show you. Because you know, the caregivers, they, need, they, they stay with the children 20 hours a day. And they are the person, they are the people that uh, should be find the, find the problem the children has. The third step is uh, when you found the children got trauma and with those problems, how you solve it. If the kids got very nervous, be very nervous, how you uh, re help him to relax, those type of things. I think the training is useful. For example, they teach us how to communicate with and educate children. I didn't have much experience about this before. The 
the children here um, plenty of the, of them got psychological problem usually we call them uh, traumatized kids we have to spend a lot of time with them and try to find a way to solve the problem uh, we have uh, different therapies treatments for them as uh, like uh, casework group work we use musical we uh, use drawing all kinds of different uh, therapies for helping them to uh, solve the problem. I'm really afraid that the children are not happy. Several days ago, a boy ran away from me and hid somewhere. I looked for him everywhere and I was really scared and cried a lot. At the very beginning, when they just arrived, you can see easily they are quite different from uh, what, we are, uh, what they are now. I think now most of them are happy kids. To ensure basic needs and provide a safe and suitable living environment for the children is not enough. They need psychological support to overcome their trauma and strengthen their resilience. Morning Tears tries to rebuild a world for these children who've lost theirs. Morning Tears always has to walk a fine line. The children have experienced emotional hardship in their life, which makes them very vulnerable. On the other hand, they also need education, and they need to learn. Just like any other youngster, they need encouragement and some pushing, but the stress that this might provoke in the child might reverse the emotional healing process. I think love is the most important thing, because these kids already have been hurt, and they might have psychological problems, they need more attention. If you as a teacher can't answer this, it will hurt them. We need to pay more attention to them. If you do this, the kids are also willing to get closer to you. And the kids like it if we play with them after class. I think happiness, health and learning are very important to a child. We pay more attention to the psychological aspects of these children. And the caregivers of Ai Tong came to talk with us quite often. These children have made a lot of progress with the assistance of the teachers and caregivers. Morning Tears is a non-profit organization registered in Belgium, Spain, Holland, Denmark and the US. Morning Tears has signed in a friendly spirit cooperation agreements with the Chinese authorities to carry out the Coming Home project. As well as running these centers, Morning Tears also gives training to childcare institutions in working with traumatized children. We're so thankful that we get so much support and assistance from Morning Tears in the field of child protection. We signed a Memorandum of Understanding with Morning Tears in 2007 and signed a formal agreement in 2008. So we've been working together for quite a long time and you can really see that the cooperation is working very well and the relationship between the governments is also going very well. For Morning Tears, one thing is clear. Child protection is an issue that should be in the hands of state authorities. Morning Tears provides advice to the government and other organizations on child protection. We also lobby to make authorities take responsibility for children of convicts. Over the years, Morning Tears has gained a strong reputation and the trust of the government in China. We have signed formal cooperation agreements with a number of government departments, hospitals and prisons. To Morning Tears, uh, it is re really important to get the government involved in this uh, situation because you know we cannot solve all the problems. Uh, if we got the government support and involved in this, uh, it will, you know, it will make big difference. That means the, all the children can be uh, protected. Thanks to our good relationship with local government, 
Morning Tears can organize a visit from the child to its parents in prison three or four times a year. The children look forward to these visits. Some imprisoned parents have actually visited the Coming Home Project in Zhengzhou. For the parents in prison, it's also important to see that their children are in good hands. It keeps them going and motivates them to behave well in prison. I think it's actually it's the most important thing to have a relationship with, with their parents, just continue to uh, contact each other. It's also very important to the parents, uh, you know, when we take kids, go to visit them, it will cheer them up, uh, help them a lot. The, the policeman told us it's really helped them out. They, 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 they work well and uh, they try to uh, get out earlier, so they work very hard. Morning Tears has received the exclusive China Charity Award from the Chinese government. This award is given every five years to a charity that has delivered outstanding work. We uh, win the China Charity Award uh, of 2009. This is the highest level uh, of award of central government. So I think you can easily say it's uh, the relationship between two governments is, goes very well. Morning Tears functions largely with the efforts of volunteers. Only staff that work directly with the children and some coordinators are on the payroll. Overheads are kept low and most of the money we receive can go to the children. Morning Tears depends entirely on donations and subsidies. The availability of money determines how many children we can help and the range of services that we can offer them. At this stage, the focus of Morning Tears projects is on China. We are, however, exploring opening programs in some other countries where we know that many convicts' children are suffering. Right now, we're establishing a new project in Moscow called Morning Dew. Morning Tears has become a success story, but more needs to be done. More children need help. This can only be done if the number of people who support Morning Tears grows. Raising the money to run an organization like Morning Tears is a major challenge. Morning Tears hopes that more people will become aware of the very deep emotional pain and confusion that millions of children in the world suffer because their parents are in prison. <laughs>